Well, there she is, the fear not. The 16 foot Sundance skiff, the boat that we chase fish on all the time. And we're having an issue, of course, because it's a boat, with my uh, 1986 Johnson 28 horse outboard motor. And the problem is now that uh, no fuel is getting into the carb. All right, so we can see here the bulb, we are squeezing it's real firm. So we know that we've got some fuel pressure all the way up to the fuel pump and then behind the fuel pump down coming into the carb. So what that's gonna tell us is that there should be gas down in the bowl. So what we can do is take off the drain plug here. And if this has gas in it, gas should just come pouring out. And nothing, not a drop. So what we're gonna do is we have a pretty good, uh, a pretty good idea that the float needle or the needle that's on the float is stuck in the up position it's not letting fuel into the bowl so we're gonna have to take that out polish some stuff off look for some crud and put it back together so let's get to this maybe you're having the same issue and this will help you okay so to get the carburetor off here unfortunately since this is an outboard and the engineers that design these are crazy we're gonna have to take this entire starting mechanism off so then we can get to the carburetor to take it off so first thing is we'll take off this bolt We'll take off this bolt. There's another bolt down in here behind the solenoid. So we'll have to take the solenoid off to get to that one. And then we'll have to take these two bolts off here that hold the throttle linkage right here. So one, two, three, four, five bolts. We should be good to go. You want to be real careful at this point not to drop things down into the area below the engine. It's real hard to get to, and there's also a great big hole that goes down into the lower unit. You do not want to drop stuff down in there. When I get to that point with the carburetor, I'll take a rag and stuff it into that hole. That way nothing can fall down into the engine. One more bolt right here. So that's all the bolts that hold the starter on. So now we can take this whole assembly off so then we can get to what we're going after, which is the carburetor. We do have to move this linkage out because the arm of the starter kind of comes back in here behind this. So we're gonna have to take our idle screw adjustment out so that can move. comes out like that. A good point to remember here is that if you dropped anything down in here, uh, most everything on this engine is aluminum or some other non-ferrous metal, so a magnet will not pick that stuff up. So you gotta be real careful. There's also a hole down here. We'll take a, we'll take a shop rag and cover that hole up so nothing falls down into, um, into this mechanism here or down into the lower unit. Okay, so now the starter is off, so we have access to the carburetor. So now really the only thing we have to do is remove this linkage. We have to remove these two nuts, and then we'll have to remove the fuel line, and then this whole entire carburetor will come out. Now I'm gonna take a shop rag and go under here. 
And I know I'm on top of some fuel lines, so I know it's not completely covered up, but that should protect if anything falls down and won't go down in that hole that we'll never find anything again. And there's that one. And now the carburetor comes off. Fuel line here. Now fuel just poured out, which let me know that there's pressure to here, but it wasn't getting into the bowl, which again confirms my suspicions that the float was stuck. Now, I have an electric choke and it is mounted to the carburetor body. So I'm gonna take this off. This makes it a whole lot easier. Again, don't wanna lose any screws. The carburetor is out. So now we'll take the carburetor over here and put it on the bench. All right, so here's the carburetor on the front of it. You see where the, the drain plug or the drain hole is for the bowl. The bowl is this thing down here. And then here's the top part of the carburetor. Uh, this is your idle adjustment or your idle air adjustment rather. Uh, that's the outside. And then this is the part that connects to the engine. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the bowl off, which is four screws. Be very careful because there's a gasket in between the bowl and the carburetor. And if you don't want to replace that gasket, if it's if it's newer, you can probably get away with it. But if it's older, it's gonna come apart, apart in pieces. And so you're gonna have to replace that. So best not to start this project unless you have a carburetor rebuild kit handy that will replace some of these gaskets. So we'll move these screws out of the way. We can see that the bowl is gonna come off. And there is the float. Inside this carburetor here, we have the float that's here, and then we have the needle valve that's here. The needle valve is held on to the float with a spring. This little tab right here is an adjustment. You can adjust where the float goes uh, in, in relation to how much gas is in the bowl. So what we'll do now is there's a pin that comes through here. Sometimes these are threaded, and sometimes this is just a push. Uh, this one is just a plastic push, so I'm going to uh, use a awl or a, or a little prick and push that through so it comes out the other side. All right, so here we have that little plastic thing. I'm just gonna use this awl to push it out where I can get a grab on it on the other side. I can use this one too to get me a little bit more grabby on it. And then there is that plastic rod comes out and now the float and the needle come out. And so now what we're gonna do is we're going to polish the inside of that so that this needle doesn't get stuck again. And I can't really feel much resistance in there, but we're gonna do that anyway. Okay, so one of the issues is that this needle here can get rough spots on the side of it. The other, and, and rough spots from varnish or from bad gas, uh, that kind of stuff. The other issue is that varnish can happen and get inside this, in what's called the needle seat. It's down inside there. It's where the, the needle goes into to pinch off uh, a little tiny orifice to keep gas from coming into the carburetor bowl. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to, we're gonna use a Q-tip and we're going to polish the inside of that needle seat as best we can. And the way that we're gonna do that is either with, uh, I have some of this Star Glow, it's a marine grade polish for, uh, for different types of metals, or I ain't talking about your mama, but you wanna get some mother's um, aluminum polish. This stuff right here, now listen, I'm not talking about your mama. Mother's aluminum polish or Star Glow polish so mothers or the star glow stuff we're going to put some of that on a q-tip then we're going to put that q-tip in a drill and we're going to push it down in there we're going to polish the inside of that really well uh, and then we will rinse that out with some carburetor cleaner once we're done i'm gonna use some mothers that out. 
that's the grime and stuff that was in there keeping the needle from seeding correctly. So one, what we can do here. Basically, all we're trying to do is just polish the inside of this so that it's nice and smooth. So I'm going to put on my little eyeballs here and see if I see anything. And I don't. That looks very clean. So what we'll do is... Okay, so that's all clean, we're ready to go. So we're going to get the float and the needle back out. So we can see that now that's, we can see that now that's moving and we can also see the needle in there moving up and down freely. So now we will our gasket still looks perfectly fine, so we'll put that on. Okay, we have everything back together on the carb. We have the float, and we can see that the float and the needle are working perfectly. So now we're gonna put the gasket back on, and you wanna line up all of the holes on the gasket. The bottom or the bowl back on. And we wanna make sure that the gasket is perfectly aligned with the holes in there. So what we'll do is use the screws to kind of hold it in place so I can see that the gasket is good here. So now that I have all the screws started, I can kind of go around the carburetor and I can make sure that the gasket is, is perfect all the way around there, and it is. So now I can begin to tighten up the screws. And you don't tighten up all of them all at once. You tighten, you kind of just give them all the way down just to snug. And once all four of them are snugged and it is equally tight all the way around, then you can tighten them. You don't want to get one side real tight before all the others are seated because then that can make the gasket bubble up. And you don't want fuel leaking after you've taken all this time. So our carburetor is back together. So now let's take it back over to the boat and put it back on. It's just reversing the process that we took it off. Now from the Department of Redundancy Department, I like to put a zip tie on the linkage and then one up through where the throttle connects so that it just doesn't come off. That plastic right there just doesn't inspire great trust with me. So this way I know that that ain't coming out. So now we're going to put the starter mechanism back on. Okay. Voila. So now what we can do is we can pump the bulb, the bulb and if fuel comes out of the bottom of the bowl, we know that that's correct and that is correct. So now we can put the drain plug back in the bottom. Now we got fuel in there, so everything is tight back here electrically. Good, good. So now let's crank it up and see if it'll run. to clean a carburetor that has a stuck needle. I hope this has helped you. I hope that uh, you know you feel comfortable being able to try this on your own and make sure you make it to church on Sunday. He loves his boat. Have an awesome day. Bye.